I've been investing in short-term rentals all over the world over the last eight years. So today, I wanna to share this experience with you so that if you're starting off or making your next investment, you're gonna be able to see things a little further ahead and see investments in a bigger picture. So when I set out to find my ski resort, I wanted it all. I wanted a great investment. I wanted to be able to use it whenever I wanted to go skiing. And I wanted it all at a reasonable price. So I traveled around different states like California, Nevada, searching for the best ski resorts. I realized that a lot of ski vacation rentals don't make a lot of money. Most people who buy these ski vacation rentals aren't really looking to do it as a business. They just want a place to stay. They're passionate about skiing. They were happy to have some of the expenses and mortgage paid for. When I came across Lake Tahoe, it was a little bit different because Lake Tahoe had two very strong seasons. The winters had a very strong season because there was 15 amazing ski resorts all around Lake Tahoe. And in the summer seasons, I noticed that the revenues were expected to be almost twice as much as the winter season. I also felt like I found an Airbnb gold mine. Most of the towns around Lake Tahoe wasn't permitting any more short-term rentals. Property I was looking at is an incline village. And at the time, there was no real difficult restriction to get a short-term rental permit. And that was the regulation at the time. So the other thing about this property, there was a big tax advantage. You see, Lake Tahoe is split by two neighboring states. One is California and the other is Nevada. In fact, you would see guys like Mark Zuckerberg or Larry Ellison amongst guys that would invest in the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe to gain residency so that they can save on their taxes. So I knew the demand to have residency on the Nevada side was always gonna keep my property value high. I remember booking a hotel in Malibu. And the interesting thing was there was no hotel clerk or lobby. It was completely self check-in. So I knew there was this huge opportunity to convert multifamily units in these very desired tourist destinations. So in the case of finding a property at Incline Village, the cheapest single family house was approximately $750,000. But I came across the six unit property and it was selling for 1.4 million. So if I took the average price per unit, it came out to be approximately $233,000. I wasn't looking for the guest that was bringing in 10 to 15 people and I didn't wanna have the huge parties. I was happy to cater to the guest that was a single person, a couple or a small family. I knew they didn't care about staying in an Airbnb that was adjacent to another Airbnb. So to me, it was like having six Airbnbs for the price of one home. So before we make any investment on any property, we definitely do our underwriting. But in this particular case, we would use AirDNA. On AirDNA, you can compare properties in the local areas and you can see what they're making on average. You can even measure yourself against the top performers, the mid-level performers, and the lower level performers. And you can see what you might expect to make. So it was a good way for us to make projections forward. So we have an affiliate link to AirDNA in our description. At the time, we were making $1,200 for a studio, $1,400 for the one bedroom, and $2,200 for the two bedroom, giving us a total rent roll of $8,800. Now, if we took comparable properties on AirDNA, we were gonna expect to make approximately $3,072, give or take, for the one bedroom. There wasn't a studio comparison, but we would just take 20 to 30% off of the one bedroom rate and use that as our, our studio estimate. For a two bedroom, we were estimating approximately $30, $4,400. So our expected rent roll from Airbnb, according to AirDNA, was approximately $17,584. This six unit property was going for approximately 1.4 million at the time. Now, if I were to take that same $1.4 million investment and bought a single family home, I could probably get a decent looking four bedroom uh, single family home. And according to AirDNA, I would only make approximately $6,800 on that. By having the multiple units, I was expected to make approximately 255% more in revenues. So then I started shopping around and comparing other multifamily units as well as some single family units. And we did a side-by-side -side comparison. And this particular property 
one by far. So once I figured out I wanted to buy this property, the next step was to do the proper due diligence. But the most important due diligence is to go see if we can run short-term rentals legally. And as long as you pay your transient occupancy tax of like say 10% and you weren't getting complaints from a neighbor, you were pretty much good to go. But that should have been a red flag because this wasn't the county permitting office. So what I should have done was I should have gone into the local county and municipality where the permitting office was and talked to the people there. So shortly after I bought the property, as soon as each of the long-term leases ended, I began renovation on the property. I was renovating each of the property one at a time and then COVID happened. It took me two and a half years to renovate the entire place. Well, so my total cost of renovation was between $500,000 and $600,000. So there was a brief time I was able to do short-term rentals for all the unit. And I was able to bring in the highest grossing month during one of the summer months at approximately $42,000. This was about the time when Washoe County started enforcing short-term regulation and they forced everyone to reapply for short-term rental permits and some of the local community people said that this was probably due to uh, the hotel lobby in the area so the qualifications and the permitting process was quite strict there was a lot of fire hazard safety guidelines such as having smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors that all communicated with each other as well as fire escape ladders and things like that but the problem was the application process took a long time and cost a lot of money we even needed like the fire safety hat of Marshall to actually come to your property and do a full inspection. I was on my fourth permit. And then the county came back to me and said, you can only have one short-term rental permit. But at the time I said, I figured, you know what? Maybe I can make a pivot to a 30-day minimum rental. And at the time there was a lot of remote work due to COVID. So I thought maybe we could make this work. And it did for a while. So for a while we were approximately averaging 21 to $22,000 per month in total revenues. But recently, um, a lot of people have moved back to the Bay Area. Remote work hasn't been as popular. The economy is slowing down. So we're definitely seeing the numbers change a little bit. So now I'm currently making another pivot. I'm taking the five units and renting it to long-term tenants and keeping them one unit on a short term. And even then I'm expecting our approximate rent roll to be approximately $20,000 a month. Plus the place is furnished, so we might be able to charge a premium to the right tenant. Now, I always come back to like the key to making any investment decision is make sure you get a great deal in the beginning. So my investment was quite safe because I underwrote it in under the worst case scenario. I looked at the best case scenario and I was happy with either case in between. But if I had done the due diligence all over again, I would have gone to the local municipality and talked to as many people as possible and find out what the local sentiment was about short-term rentals. And I also saw there was a strong community of a young labor force with a high demand for long-term leases. On top of that, I was going to take six homes away from the local community for long-term leases. I mean, there's obviously a big problem with the shortage of housing in the United States, but this was much more exacerbated because in this particular area, area, we were up in the national forest. So there was a lot of government agencies that you would need to get approval from just to build new housing. So in hindsight, I should have looked at things more from a perspective of a city planner. And it's not hard to see what I was trying to do was going to eventually run into some problems. If I had done this whole investment all over again, would I have done it? Sure I would have. Probably would have been a lot more conservative when I went and renovated and upgraded the place. Because a lot of long-term tenants don't want a furnished apartment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I would love to hear from you in the comment section whether you agree with my investment thesis and if you would do things differently. And do you think short-term rentals are a risky investment? Comment and share your thoughts and experience with us.